Welcome to a brand new edition of the Nigerian Queens. My name is Olani Abodedile, but as you know, many of you call me The Voice. And I go by the name of Matome Maribe, proudly South African. In South Africa and many places around the world, marriages that involve Nigerian men and non-Nigerian women are mostly controversial and frowned upon by parents and citizens of those host countries where Nigerians reside. Some of the reasons for this is because of stereotypes or wrong societal perceptions that an average Nigerian man is involved in illegal activities or wants to get married because of documentation. I feel that these assumptions are highly from being true. Well, as you can see, I'm always proudly Nigeria. I'm fully dressed in my Nigerian cashmere attire. So join me, let's take a drive in this latest Ford Mustang and let's visit some of the Nigerian queens that have been happily married to hard-working, honest and dedicated Nigerians over the past years. I can't wait to take a drive in this lovely car. To be honest, I am excited. This is one journey I would like to take and hear what my sisters have to say regarding the union of the Nigerian husbands. Well, today we'll be paying a visit to three families. The Ogongo family, the Ojis family and the Bajomov's family. So why not join me? Let's take this ride. Here we are to meet the three families, for them to give us a general insight about themselves and their families, a sort of general introduction. It will be interesting to hear how they met their husbands, what their first impression of them was, and at what point did they know they will be the right one for them, and to share with us their unforgettable memories with their husbands. So come along. My name is Madev Constance Bajomo. I'm a health facility planner at Plan Clinics and Hospitals, both private and government. Uh, married, I am married to Dr. Abioden Sunday Bajomo, who is a dentist. I am originally from Limpopo. I was born in Johannesburg, actually, then moved to Limpopo. But my family is from Venda, which is in Limpopo, from a town called Shandima. I grew up there, schooled there, and started working there. And that's when I met my husband. I met my husband uh, 26 years or so back. I met him at a hospital where we were both working. He was working there as a, a dentist, and I was working there as a nurse. And the first impression that I got about him was he, he was friendly, he was good looking, and he was dressed well. So he had a very good dress code. My name is Nobudelo Okongo. I am born and raised in Soweto, and I am a director and 
Consulting Software Development and IT Consultancy Company. I am married to Gideon Ayola Uteni <laughs> Ogun. I said that right. He is a man of many, many talents, but he's a software developer um, and he also is plays a very big role in the company that I'm a director of. And he got me into IT actually because I actually studied law, but he got me into the family business and yes, that's what we do. I am, Nongulelo is a very chilled person. I am a mother of three and we have been running the IT company for a couple of years now and I enjoy IT surprisingly considering that my background is legal but I'm starting to enjoy the tech and the development and all of that. Um, I met my husband through my best friend. I met my best friend at Varsity on the first day of school. My best friend is also Nigerian by the way and on the first day of law school I saw this bubbly beautiful girl who had a very funny looking cap and I just went to her because I needed directions and she was just so welcoming which was my first encounter with a Nigerian also and she was just a very incredible person anyway my husband and my best friend grew up together their parents were pastors in the same church and they sort of grew up together so my best friend put a profile picture on Facebook of myself and her and I guess Gideon saw me and his life changed forever. And he inboxed her or he talked to her and asked her if he could. He asked her who I was and she was like, this is my best friend and all of that. And then he, and he inboxed me on Facebook. And I think the first thing he said was some whack pickup line. He was like, um, Fumi was my best friend before you came along. How do you plead guilty? <laughs> that's what I can say to the first time but yes um, so I think we spoke on Facebook for a while I was still living in Rez at the time I was studying it. I was still in Rez at the time and we spoke for a while and surprisingly the first time he saw me he didn't ask me out he did not ask me to be his he's actually never asked me to be his girlfriend but here we are anyway we I think we met after a month after talking and then we've been together ever since I guess and my first impression of him was he is a very showy guy he is when he, he, he first came to see me at a race he was holding an iPad he was and I was not impressed with that at all because I was like oh this guy is so materialistic but um, as time went on and I got to know him I realized he was not that type of guy at all. He's actually not materialistic at all. My name is Alicia Oji. My husband's name is Frank Oji. I am the CEO of African Academy of Cinematic Arts. My husband is the CEO of African Academy of Cinematic Arts. He is also a producer, a director, and a cinematographer. And I'm also a producer. Okay, so I am South African born. I grew up in Johannesburg. My mom is English, my dad is Afrikaans, so People often refer to me as an Afrikaans person. So some insights about myself. When I went to university, I met Nigerians for the first time. This was very, very exciting for me because all of a sudden, my world made sense. And the culture, the, the richness in, in the whole approach to life was what really um, actually changed my life. Because even business ethics, the, the acumen, is on another level. The work ethic is on another level. And these were all things that attracted me to, to Nigeria as a whole. There are jokes that the Igbo culture and the Afrikaans culture are similar in that they both like money. Um, and ironically, that's also how we met. We met through work. So the way that I met my husband, I was actually busy 
working on a Sunday, we were working on a, a project for, for DSTV and I had a deadline that I needed to finish really, really quickly. So I called a, a, a Nigerian guy that I knew at the time, his name is Theo. I said, Theo, we need to come to studio to record. And this is now Sunday at four o'clock in the afternoon. And he said, okay, that's fine. And then he called me back and he said, wait, do you have a producer? I said, I'm using the studio. Obviously, you've got to bring a producer. So he said, that's fine. So when I arrived, this was when I met my husband for the first time, we were working. So my first impression of him was that he was a real charmer and a ladies man. Um, but the reason I kept working with him is because his, he, the way that he worked and his, his level of expertise was just amazing, just amazing. And then he said to me that he wants to start dating and I said, no, I don't want to date you. We either work together or we date, so you can decide. And he said, we have to do both. And till today, we're doing both. <laughs> I knew Gideon was the one when he left for Nigeria after we'd been seeing each other for the while. Not seeing each other as boyfriend and girlfriend, but seeing each other because when we met, like I said, he didn't ask me to be his girlfriend. So he'd been, he'd been coming to see me um, in school, in, which was in Brantford team, every single day from Medrand. So this guy went to work every day and after work he comes to see me and he doesn't come to see me to ask me to be his girlfriend, no. I was writing my exams at the time. He comes to school to give me McDonald's milkshake, to give me energy drink, play so I can study the whole night in the library. So he was there every single day. And in December, I remember it was December because I had gone back home from Rez for the holidays. He told me he was going to Nigeria. I think it was for three weeks or I don't remember, but for a month. And then it dawned on me when he wasn't around. I was like, oh my God, I actually miss this person. Um, I think that's when I realized that, okay, I think maybe I, you know, I, I really like him. And yes, it's been, he made himself a very important part of my life and it wasn't even about the big things I remember when he used to want to buy me and I'd refuse and I'd be like no I don't want your money um, but he made himself present and that for me was very important at the time and I think when he left I realized that no I I really miss this person and yes we've been together and kicking it ever since then and I don't think it was love at, at I don't think it was love at first sight because I, I looked at him as a friend. After we've met and um, we've been friends, I realized that he was more matured and he knows exactly what he was looking for. So at that point, I knew that he was the one because he he told me exactly what is it that he's looking out of this friendship and relationship. What is interesting about this is that when we met, he knew that I was the one, but I didn't know that he was the one. Shortly after we did the work together, I left Johannesburg and he was in Johannesburg. And I left for two years. This man waited for me for two years. He didn't have my number. He couldn't ask the people that he knew, that I also knew, for my contacts because he didn't want them to know because he knew that if they know that they contact if he, he knew that if they contact if he wants to contact me they're going to contact me so he could never ask and there he waited for two years after those two years guess who called him it was me because i needed to get work done again he proposed to me he said that he loves me I told him, you cannot love me because you don't know me. At this moment, I didn't know that he had been waiting for me for two years. In this moment, I didn't know that he knew that he was going to marry me. So he outrightly said, I love you. And I outrightly said, you are crazy because I do not know you. <laughs> and he said, that's fine. All you need to know is that I love you. Um, some months went by because I told him, no, we cannot 
work together and be together. We have to choose one. He said, okay, fine. Let's just work together. And when we were now working together, I got to know him. And day by day, day by day, I got to see the person that he is and I fell in love with him. And on the 24th of December, which year was that? This is now 2011. 2011, 24th of December, I called him and I said, please can I see you, can we meet? And then we met and I told him, I agree, you are the one. And we got married seven months later. We now have got three children, Talita, Phoenix and Joy Orji. Oldest is seven, the youngest is two, and hopefully there will be more on the way. Three unforgettable memories I have with my husband would definitely have to be the birth of our three girls. He, every single time, he is an incredible person. In that time, he is present, he supports me, and he makes the moment um, something to remember. And I think for me, those are the most important memories we have together. Three together would be the birth of our girls. The three unforgettable memories, the first one would definitely be the first day we met, definitely. He always says that he knew that I was the one, he knew the first moment that we met that he was going to marry me. And I remember that moment vividly and it is a special moment to me. I would say the next moment would be the very first time he came with a crazy idea and I did not understand what he was saying and that crazy idea turned into something quite remarkable and number three would be when our first child was born definitely because she's born she was his he, she was born a day before his birthday when he turned 30 so that was like having a human being as a gift but definitely the moment of my of our first child being born We have lots of unforgettable memories, but I would say the, the outstanding ones would be um, the birth of our children when we had Felicia. And that was another thing that I've never I've never expected. I, I've never felt like I could feel like that in my life, and I could see it from him as well that it was special. And when we had our second child, uh, Jonathan, I think he was more excited. <laughs> but that was the special moment for us all as well. I would say maybe also the day that we got married. That was also a special day. Although later after that we had lots and lots of um, unforgettable mom moments. Something that I noticed that stands out is that these couples run a family business, which is great. Nombulelo stated that she studied law but has been converted into IT by her husband. It was so nice to hear them share their unforgettable memories with their husbands. It will be quite interesting to hear from my sisters share the experience they went through when they told their parents that they wanted to marry Nigerians. I know a lot of Nigerians go through so much with their in-laws, but now have a great relationship with them. Speaking of in-laws, I wonder if those African movies we watch are true about how mother's in-laws treat their son's wife. Frankly, it will be nice to hear if they face any sort of stereotype or discrimination because they are married to foreign men. Well, you know, in South Africa, that could be quite a complicated thing to see when um, two different cultures <laughs> come together. When I told my family, they didn't believe me. <laughs> they were in denial. They were like, no, um, you're not. I said, I am. And this is the person that I love. And in fact, before I announced that I'm marrying my husband, I insisted that he meets my family. The first time we met, my mother was at 2 o'clock in the morning on the 1st of January. So, um, 
I made sure that they knew who he was, and then after I made the announcement, they actually thought that I was going to marry my childhood friend, which is not what I wanted. I knew that I wanted to be with him because of who he is. And um, some people didn't come to the wedding, but they missed out. And um, other than that, after they accepted, they thought that we would get divorced very quickly, but we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> Um, well, my parents are late, but um, my family. I like saying the ones that matter didn't care, and the ones that care don't matter. But on a serious note, though, my family has has always been concerned about my happiness, and they they did not at any point express any apprehension or concern. I think. I've always been mature and I think they trust my decisions and yes they were actually quite welcoming but it's hard not to welcome him I mean if you sit with him for an hour he's an incredible guy no bias he's my husband yes but he's an incredible guy and it's easy to to fall in love with him if I may say just upon meeting him and forget the stereotype of him being Nigerian and just deal with him on a very deep level and not on a superficial level so my family was quite okay with it and they love him I, I think sometimes I feel like they love him more than they love me but yeah okay uh, before I told my, my, my family that um, he has asked me to marry him I have introduced him as a friend before and when he came as a friend, I think he made a very good impression to them. My dad especially, he completely loved him the first time he saw him. Because um, I think the first time he came, to, he saw my dad, he, po he prostrate on the floor. And my dad was very impressed. <laughs> he thought, no, this is a real African man. <laughs> And I think he stole his heart at that moment. So when it was time for, for me to let them know that no, um, he had asked me to marry him, they, they, they were already very open to the relationship. The relationship between myself and my in-laws is, oh my God, I love my mother-in-law. I wish, this is the one time that I wish I wasn't married to a Nigerian man because then my mother-in-law would be in the same country as me. Um, I love her with my whole entire existence. Um, my mother-in-law prays for me more than I pray for myself. Um, sometimes I know uh, her prayers are what carry us through. She she's an incredible she's an incredible woman, and every time I'm with her, she's. Um, uh, I must say I'm fortunate, um, uh, my husband comes from a good family, Christian family. Um, they are not well to do, they are not a rich family, but they've got good hearts and I, I relate very well with them from the beginning and um, I became a pillar of strength to them as well as I've assisted. Uh, a lot of my in my sisters in laws children, I kind of even raised them. Uh, some of them I brought them to South Africa and assist them to go to school. And they are, yeah, we just like one big family. I think I have a very good relationship with my in laws. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know why? Because everybody knows where, they, where their lane is, everybody knows their place. So there's never anything difficult or complicated. In fact, when people talk about, um, oh, my mother-in-law is my 
no, I don't get it. My mother-in-law is amazing. She knows who she is. I know who I am, and and we move. Um, yes, all the time, but it was worse while the time that I got married because the time that we got married, I think I was. We were few. I was one of the people that first got married to the Nigerians at that time. I think my husband arrived um, in South Africa in 94. And um, it was short, like two years after that, that we got married. And there were very few of his friends that were married at that time. That was like 25 years ago. So it was something that a lot of people still frown upon. And you know, you get a lot of stereotypes where people will be talking about you, thinking that you're not hearing what they're saying. I also have these features that people who don't know me, they automatically think that I'm also a foreigner. So they wouldn't know that I'm, I'm hearing what they're saying until I say something. <laughs> but yeah. But I, I think it, I took it well and I never allowed it to offend me or anything. You know, people are allowed to think whatever they think. They are allowed to voice their opinion. And if, if it's somebody that is important in our lives, then you can try and talk to them to re remove their misconceptions. But if it's somebody that doesn't mean anything to you, they can say what they want and that's it. Um, yes, yes. Um, white people, you know, when they see a white person, they automatically believe that that white person is racist, so then they would make racist jokes or comments. But then when they learn that you're married to a Nigerian, you know, as some of the people in my, some of my friends actually said, Alicia, you, you married a black guy, but you didn't just marry a black guy, you decided to marry a Nigerian guy, the original, the original people of Africa, so... <laughs> It was very, very interesting. Nowadays, when when we walk around, we, we, we see people look at us, but after years of marriage, it's, it's no longer interesting to us. So you get the looks, you get the moments of disbelief, you get people staring at you, but after a while, I mean, it just becomes a lifestyle. Other than that, no, not really. Yes, I have, I think. Any woman that is married to a Nigerian man in South Africa and says they haven't faced any discrimination or stereotype would be lying or they live in a bubble. It's, it comes with the territory, honestly. It's the nature of the beast. Um, we know the current setup in our country and we know the events of the past where Nigerians are concerned and the conflict between South Africans and Nigerians. So, yes, I have, we have as a couple experience the stereotype. I mean, it's, it's everywhere, at the store. And I don't know what it is about the way I look, but South Africans meet me and my husband and just assume I'm Nigerian. Um, we've had instances where cashiers are gossiping about us and saying something about Nigerians. And I'm standing there and I'm like, but I'm here. <laughs> Why are you gossiping about me? But yeah, it's, it's, it's never been anything too harmful. It's, it's, I take it in my stride, I guess, and we take it in our stride. And it's it's something we've gotten used to. It's not everyone, I'll have to say. It's a very small minority of people that actually have that type of mindset. But it's there, it exists, and it's something you learn to live with, or if I may say. But it's, it's it, it doesn't move me too much. I mean, I have some family members, distant family members, not close, the ones that I said don't matter, uh, who will make a comment or two about Nigerians or whatever it is. Um, but it really doesn't matter to me because I'm married to my man. He's a man before he's Nigerian. And for me, that's, that's all that matters. I deal with him on that. Sometimes I even forget that he's Nigerian, except when... I'm sleeping and I dream and I wake up and he says you were talking in your sleep and I'm like what did I say? He can't tell me because I don't dream in English but I think those little moments when I'm reminded that oh yeah you're, you're married to a Nigerian man but I mean it's it's all good it's all good to be I think we've, we've gone through it so much that it's, it's not 
It's not really a big factor. Mm -hmm.